Hello and welcome back to another episode of our unknown to icon 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 Jesus. Hello and welcome to another episode of our unknown to icon series where we are in season three and we are still in charge of Brackley Town. In the last episode, we lost our first game of the season and oh my god, it's gonna feel like a long, long road. Yeah, had a feeling, you know what, in the first three minutes when we conceded and even after five minutes after that goal as well, I, I said it's going to be a battering. Oh well, our first loss. In today's episode, we are going to go through the eight games that I've played in for background, including the FA Cup fourth qualifying round. And if there's time at the end, we will play a game that is going to be vital to our season. The reason why it's going to be so vital? Well, let me tell you about it. So let's get right in. In the last episode, we finished on a downer. We lost our first game of the season. We did so well. I think we was unbeaten in six. We were sitting second in the table. And then we came across Woking away. And look at those stats. We got absolutely outplayed, outbeaten. Whatever you want to call it, it was just Poor performance from us. We just didn't show up. And it started to make me realise, hmm, is my team good enough to be in the top half of the division? I think it's good enough to, I mean, we've already shown that we're good enough to probably stay up this season. And with the odds behind us of being 500 to 1, I feel confident. I do feel confident in the fact that we're not going to get relegated and it's not going to go all backwards and tumbling. I think if we can get mid-table or even have a playoff push, I'll be happy. And then obviously then we're going to the next season and we will see where we go. If there's time, obviously we've got FM24 and I'm going to start all over again. The series will start again. I could carry it on. Uh, I guess depends where we're at. I would probably just play on FM23 if I'm honest with you. Yeah, you get the interface. Maybe in FM25, you could do go back to your FM23 save and use all the fancy stuff behind it. And then obviously it's just going to pull over database, I would presume, and your saved history. Could be an interesting one to do. For losing didn't end there. We played Barnet. And as you can see by the scoreline, up in the top left corner, we lost 5-2. Now, this one was a little bit more of a tight game. Yes, we was at home. I mean, you look at shots, 16 to their 19, shots on target, 6 to their 9. Yes, XG probably tells the story a bit. Obviously, they got the XG of 3, we got XG of 2. So in that aspect, they should have beaten us 3-2. But actually, they beat us 5-2. And the story of the game was the fact that I was winning 2-0. 2-0 in the lead. And then come half time, they scored Five goals. They scored a really quick goal. Well, quick two goals in the space of seven minutes. And then I think my team fell apart and I was tweaking a lot in my tactics, which probably didn't help. And it was all over. So we've lost two in a row. Will that continue? Let's have a look at the next game. And next game is away at Notts County. And at the time we played them, they were second in the table. And look at that scoreline. We nicked a cheeky 1-0 win. Probably didn't play for the best that I've seen us play. But my God, I was so happy with that victory. Just after losing two games, our defence has just been really poor. And to keep a clean sheet against Knox County, big thumbs up. So let's dive into the stats. They had 19 shots versus our 10. 6 to our 3 on target. XG was very close. And if we go down, 34% possession versus a 66. Equal on corners, we had 26 fouls. You can see that we played dirty. Only got three yellow cards. They won for majority of the headers. Tackles, we actually had better tackling considering how many times we fouled. Our passing was really bad considering we only had 34% of possession that's probably why and our average rating was better that was probably it helps by obviously for goal oh yeah and we had a lot more intensity sprints so we get the ball and we run with it uh we either run or we look for that over uh over for ball over for 
what's the saying? Over for ball, over for defense ball, whatever you want to call it. Through ball, over, over through ball, top through ball. <laughs> I can't remember. Anyway, that's what how we kind of play. It worked last season. Is it working this season? Well, we had two losses. We were scoring, but we were conceding a lot. Well, actually, no. We lost 3-0, then lost 5-2, and then we win 1-0 against one of the favourites to go up, and we beat them at their own home. So our tactics paid off in that game. And then we play Atkinson at home, and we draw. After that great victory against Notts County, we draw. And to be fair, you look at the stats, it's probably a fair result. Neither team showed great signs of that we want to win. Uh, I was quite shocked that they had more high intensity sprints than us because that's how we normally play. So they ended up stopping us playing what we want to do. And maybe that's the thing that made us stuck and just couldn't get for victory. Now, if you're paying attention, you might have noticed in the team sheets behind me is some new names. And I'll go through because I have made some signings. So after our two losses, I made some signings. That 5-2 loss pushed me. It pushed me of going, you know, in, you know, in the last video at the end, I said, we've got 4K to spend. Well, I spent some of it. We needed to. We needed to just have more strength and depth. So we then drew again against Field. So we're picking up points. So from Notts Counter, from our two losses, we've won and we've now drawn two. I'm beating them three. Great stuff. We're away. Great. Again, look at the stats. I mean, we're we're not showing signs of that we are getting outplayed in any rights. So this is why I'm saying that I'm confident we're not going to be in a relegation battle this season. The results aren't going our way of like the way it was last season, but I'm building. I'm building. I think this season I need to realise in my head, I'm building. Yes, we we got used to winning last season. I, I think we're performing well. We're holding possession again. Matching up to high intensity sprints. The only concern I have is I'm trying to find a system that gets my wingers where I play inside forwards. I've always loved inside forwards, but I think I'm now starting in the last few games anyway. I've started to try and get the best out of these because as you can see, 6.2, 6.2. For other games as well, it would be low sixes. Fair enough, now and again, they might pop up with a goal and that's when they get a seven. But I'm like, well, why can't you get a higher six? Or why can't you play like 6.7 or 6.6? Just in that higher number, because if you round it up in old school championship manager days, that'd be a seven. We was okay with a seven. Seven and eights was great. Nines and tens was amazing. Six was, mm, you're not playing that well. Fives is get out of my bloody team or sub off that for minimum. Next game, we play older shots and we lose. We lost 2-1. Did we deserve for loss? I don't think so. It was probably one of those games where it was really tight. Oh, just shot, got it. Uh, they was winning 2 0. I probably changed some stuff up in for tactics, got a goal back, probably went more attacking. Uh, I mean, on this report, we actually can see for XG, and that probably tells you the story, to be fair. The two goals kept them above us, and then obviously we got the goal and we went above them. So, in theory, the way it played out, again, look at the stats. All those reds and yellows are all just matching in the middle pretty much, apart from clear cut chances. And they've had more on, tar uh, on target shots and shots. To me, that, uh, a fair result would have been a draw. But again, points lost. Not good. Now we play our fourth round qualifying game in the FA Cup. And we got outplayed by Gloucester, who are in Vanarama North. And Flanagan played a 5.8. I pretty much changed my whole team around. I want to give players who needed games and haven't really been playing well. But I've all given them a chance in a bit of a lower where they probably stand in their stats as a good player to show me what they can do. And this is how they perform. It kind of, again, gives me a viewpoint as a manager of going, well, okay, this is things that I need to fix. I need to fix my, my wing play and probably my wing backs. So out wide, I need to fix. I think in central... We're, we're scoring goals. We're holding up for play. We can keep clean sheets. One thing I noticed again in the last video of like, oh, what is my right back doing? It's because I had a um, last season, I set for individual instruction for him to play narrow because I had my left back going up. This season in this league, because I don't have the quality and it's very evenly matched by the looks of it, 
I've had to actually just go as she stay and played at flat four. And I think I've still kept Bailey pushing up, but we'll look at tactics in a minute anyway. I'm not going to look at for match stats. The game was very depressing. Let's jump to our past meetings. So Gloucester top of the table, head to head, only by goal difference, both one, two, drawn one, lost two. And last time we played them, we won three, one and drew. So in for season before, obviously for first game probably wasn't me. And maybe if second game, oh no, it probably was. We lost five now. Oh, that's not very good. When our promotion season, we drew and won. Happy days. Perfect. Away, away game draw and home game win. That's what I expect. But home game lost division higher. Played my B team virtually anyway. Underperformers or B team give players a chance and it just didn't pay off for me. My bad. I had a couple of uh, interesting bits after this game with our best player. Unfortunately, now let's just go back a little bit. Turner at the beginning of the season, his contract's expiring at end of this season and he wants to explore his options. I was like, okay, that's fine because I'm hoping that actually we perform good enough for him to sign a new contract at end of the season because he is that good enough. I mean, he is crucial to our team. I mean, he is our best player and, that, and this season so far he's been our best performer and then we get knocked out for cup. And obviously he goes, this is a bit awkward, but I wanted to let you know that Jack, Jack Turner seems pretty down about the club's failure to reach out if they got proper. Had a discussion with him and it did not go well because I kind of was like, hey man, the players let us down here. He didn't take it well. <laughs> he did not take it well. So we had a chat and he, he wasn't happy. So he, how many days, two days later, he came back. He wants to move to a bigger club. So even at the beginning of the season where he was like, I want to keep my options open. He already knew that he outgrown our club unless we got promoted. And maybe that was on his mind that if we get promoted, he's going to stick with us. And if we don't, he's going to jump ship. But this way, I guess, is that I can try and push for a transfer fee. If any club's got any money, maybe a League Two club might pay 30k. 30k for a club like us is big money. I can utilise that and put that in my wage budget and bring in some more players if we need to. But unfortunately, 30k... No offers is viable. But actually, if I read it, they not matching for wage demands. And if you look at Jack Turner, he ain't on big money. So he he's only on £400 a week. He must be asking for a lot of money. Depends where these clubs are. So Vanarama National League, National League South, definitely not going for money. South, North. He wants to go to a bigger club. And the only clubs who have come in are these. Fair enough, Solihull Moor. I mean, second, I mean, they are a Vanarama national team. And you know what? They're up there, aren't they? So they could be pushing for it this season. Right, back to our games. So we've got two more. And uh, second from last, we played Gateshead. And we drew. You guessed it, we drew. We didn't win, we drew. So we haven't won a game for a while now. We're looking for schedules because I can't actually think of how many games we haven't won. But we're looking at schedules unless I did not want to ruin it. But unless we win for next game, well, you'll have to wait and see. Did we deserve the draw? No, to be fair, they was all over us. We was very lucky to get a draw. We got a penalty and then I think we was playing all right, actually, when we got the penalty and then they just upped their game. I mean, they came out, yeah, second half and just upped their game. We fell asleep. And that's another thing. Is that something that I need to keep an eye on that we start second half? Crap. Let's see. Am I just not, as a manager, not recognising the opposition changing their ways, maybe? And that's something I need to work on because obviously we know football manager, the managers can do that. And then our last game that I will just quickly review with you is we played Southend. We was at home and Southend again was for better team-ish. Now, this game was quite interesting because there was two sendings off. They got a man sent off 52nd minute. We was losing 1-0. I went for it a bit. Got the equaliser. Maybe went for it a little bit more than I probably should have. Because I was getting eager. I was like, I can't go for a win. And then Younger got sent off in the first minute. And I was like, oh, go back, go back, go back. South End nearly won it. We nearly threw it away. But we held out and we got the draw. There you go. I mean, it wasn't too bad. It was just obviously what matters, right? Shots on target. XG. Clear cut chances. Possession even, 
corners even. They had more fouls, passes completed. Uh, we actually had a little bit more better there, percentage. Tackles won, they was winning better headers, uh, tackles, we was winning better headers though. Yellow cards equal, we've got red cards. Average rating very even. So actually you think about it, I think that deserves a draw. Could have went either way in that manner. So there we have it, there's the uh, fixtures that I played in for background. We were only won one game in for background by the way. Uh, so you didn't miss too much, didn't miss too much, but that knocks County victory. I was just, ah, oh, I was like, yes, this is going to be a change after those two losses. And then we went a month without a win. It's a hard league, you know. Stepping up from Panorama North to for National. I remember transfers. I think I brought in four or five players at the beginning of the season. And I maybe that wasn't enough. I've trusted my promoted team my, for champions, for champions last season. I trusted them. Don't think that's paying off too well for me especially now that players feel like they're, they're bigger than the club and they want to jump ship. Turner, not naming anyone. Turner. <laughs> okay, so to, in today's video, I would love to play against Chesterfield just to see if we can get a win. We're away, so it's uh, high hopes of a win, but their ninth, it's going to be a tough game. I have a feeling that we're either going to lose it or we're going to draw it. But if we win it, I've got it recorded. <laughs> Past meetings, we've never played them before. Well, in this game anyway, in the save. As I stated already, we spent some of our budget that we had 4K left. And we ended up buying these four players. So we bought Jaden Dans, Danny Preston, Asha Agbinon, 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 David Ag... Oh, and then David Obonto Homer. Agbonto Homer. Agbonto Homer. I am really bad with names. I've been non. I've been non. Preston. Dan's. Jaden. Danny. Asha. David. There you go. Got it. Don't expect me to say the, uh, those names again. <laughs> I might just call them by their first names. So yeah, Jaden Dan's. Let's have a quick look at him. Why have I signed Jaden Dan's? He, again, he's another Gaxa, right? He's preferred to play up top, but... My issue was that my wingers just wasn't performing. And it's now coming to realisation, bringing in two wingers, I'll show you the other one in a minute, is they're not performing that great either. So I think it's my tactical approach for this division is just not working as good as what it was last season. So I'm keeping shape, I'm keeping my core, but I'm trying to work out my wing backs and my wingers, see what works. And I'll show you that in a minute. So yeah, you can play a cross board uh, for top, which is really, really nice to have. And he's been signed from Liverpool. He was on a free transfer, so not directly. But I, was, I look at this. I obviously look at his stats. I liked what he had, a bit of flair, determination. He's got a bit of pace about him. Yeah, he te his technical is not that great. Great first touch, but his crossing and dribbling is not great. But I was more looking at this side of him. And then technical, obviously, we can try and train. And then once I go, OK, not bad, not bad. I always then go to their past seasons. If you can, obviously, if you're starting a fresh game, you can't do this. This is another thing that I do. I go, right, OK, he's actually played some under 18s or under 21s. And he's played a 6.72 in for, obviously, Premiership under 18s, under 21s. He's got a few goals, got some assists. And I was like, I like it. Let's take him on. And he's 18 years old. <laughs> Keep on signing his kids, right? So that was good. And then we signed Danny Preston. Oh, yeah, left back. It was one of the positions that I didn't have backup for. And Bailey just wasn't performing that great. So I thought, you know what, I'll give him competition. And look at those stats. I mean, it's not bad at all. If you think about it, of like near double digits on, well, high single digits of where we need him. So tackling 11, marking 9, 12, 11, 8, 9, 12, 11, 12. Again, good determination about a player, which I really like. And then, because we've played a few seasons, we can see what they've done. He's played them for National League before he's played 38 apps uh, in this division. So a bit of experience, which is good. He didn't play that great. He played well in for North in the first season. And he's played. So he's got some, he's got some experience about him. And that's something that we are definitely lacking, especially bringing in all these kids. I think he's worth a gamble. So yeah, really like him. I mean, he hasn't started off that great, but again, I'm trying to work out those that wing, that wide positions to try and get the best out of all four of them. Or do we just give up and just go more central? 
and love attacking wing backs. I haven't decided on that yet. That is one of my ideas that I might have to go for. And then we got Asha Ag Agbinon. Again, he hasn't been playing that great, but again, he's a winger, left winger, inverted or inside forward. Obviously, I was like, oh, nice suits for where I want to play. I want them to cut inside and let my wing backs come up if needed. Again, really nice stats, really fast, good pace. Acceleration, it's like he's quicker at go, but once he's going, he's got that pace who's just going to beat his defender. He's got really good dribbling as well. 18 years old, look at these stats, flair, 14. So a very exciting player uh, to have in my team, something that I probably don't really have. So again, something different, 18 years old, and he's from Palace. And again, he's played 18, 20 subs, two goals, one assist. Got to play him off there, 6.67. I was quite happy with that. And again, 17, 12, four goals in that season, three. Again, 6.67. See if he can step up. Very young lad, but I, I really like his stats and I think he could be a really good player for us. Definitely building for next season, right? Definitely. And I can do two-year contracts, which is amazing. And then a Chef Wednesday boy. I think I've brought this player before in past football managers of doing non-league. But look at those stats. Now, is he going to be one of them who has really good stats but just doesn't perform? I'm not too sure. We will find out. But look, 16 tackling, 16 marking. Not the best at headering, but still a 9 for this division. It's not bad. And not that required unless you go to what I require. And that's that. Concentration 13, which is really, really handy to have. And that's probably about it in mentality, which could be a letdown for him because he is weak on for other areas. Again, determination is not that great, which is a little bit of a concern. But his other stats won me over. Jump and reach 14, pace 13, acceleration 14. His strength is a bit lacking as well. I have to get him in the gym. And then Chef Wednesday, let's see stats. So uh, in his in non competitive because he hasn't got any seniors until now obviously playing with me 15 scored a goal 6.75 again i was like that's not bad a little bit wayward on this one 6.56 37 that's probably why he didn't get a new contract but i really really have taken a chance on him just because those two greens and a bit of pace just won me over if i'm honest and he's a chef wednesday boy so happy with that Right, selection time. So as you can see, I've ported over, well, I've copied over a uh, tactic that we started the season with from last season. And I've now started just to make slight tweaks. So I've gone more of a cautious play because obviously we're more aligned. Maybe I can, when I'm at home, I'd probably change that to balance and then keep this cautious. Got two men suspended, uh, which we'll replace in a minute, but this just gives you a bit of an idea. So what's changed? So if we do that, you can see that the uh, left side is inverted winger from inside forward. And we've still got right side inside forward. But if I go to Bailey and he's got uh, get uh, further forward and Randall has sit narrow. Now, Randall was getting found all the time. There's so much space down there. And that's where the majority of the goals that we was conceded. So in this one, I've got rid of Sitnara and I've got Bailey Sitnara, which actually I'm going to take that off as well. Didn't realize that was on there, but he had to uh, get forward more often. So basically it just keeps them there, but we've maintained them as wingbacks. So I have been playing around with them putting fullback defense or, or putting support. I like for automatic because then the day if we want to go attacking, that makes him attacking, him attacking, and him attacking. If we want to get defensive, that makes him defensive, him, them defensive, them defensive. That's how it's meant to work. So it's just a bit of lazy tactical decision. But we've got for free up top. We've got for free supporting. And then we got for free defending. Well, in theory, we've only got two defending. Now, is that enough in defense? I don't know. Uh, maybe one of these could be defense. Maybe that's something that I can't do because you don't have the option. Or would you put him as defense? But then he would just put a game away of these two. Uh, we will tweak. We will tweak. I don't think I'm going to go back to this. And we also have gone, uh, we were short passing. We've gone a bit more standard passing. We're playing more narrow, uh, more higher tempo. I think else is same. I think same on that one. And 
if I think of the same on that one. Oh, actually, I want to go drop off more. So I don't want to have my defense line, but I just want us to drop off more from our standard defense line. So probably that in-between mark, because we were still getting balls over the top, and I just want to see if that helps, because it helped in for playing later on in the games. Second half, <laughs> more than anything. Like you see it go over the top, and you're just like, oh, drop off, or you just drop back. But then that invites pressure, so I want to keep our line, but just... If you get pressured, you drop off. I think that's how it works out. You get a high press, you drop off rather than contain the line. We will see. Okay. Uh, Oli Younger, so logical sense would bring on uh, Bon to Hummer. And then Jaden Dans needs to come off. And that's going to be uh, Bin on. And then subs wise, obviously, we want to have a goalkeeper, a defender. Lanigan's who has that poor performance. Oh, no, I don't want to play him. Ash is getting better. You can see that. He's playing left back. Bailey. Ah, oh, he's fitness. Okay, fair enough. He's played under the 18s. And he's a trial. He's a potential player that I could bring in for Turner. I mean, great physical stats. Potentially good in mentality. It's the technical side that I'm a bit nervous about for him. Again, let's look at his non-competitive last season. Didn't play that many. 6.18, no. Kind of interesting on that. Went on loan and just didn't do anything. So now we want a goalkeeper defender, a midfielder. Uh, I mean, Turner's form's just gone meh. Uh, just so he can just be benched now. He wants to be gone. He can just go. And then Skua. Skua had a good under-18 game, so let's give him a chance. And Gexa. As a striker. Ah, oh, Skua, obviously. He can't. Yeah, da, 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 da. I wanted a winger. Winger, winger, winger. I mean, we've got Gaxa. Let's bring on Evans then. And that's kind of our winger. Right, let's go. This is going to either be a really boring game. Or it could be a thriller. Like for last game. It was one all last game. But two send-ins off. We like those games that send me into overdrive of nearly having a heart attack, don't we? Oh, Smith. Smith's been up and down, but I think it's the defence that's been letting him down. Let's see if our right gets caught out, Rendell, because that's where we've been conceding a lot. Oh, nearly went through. Oh, quick play by Smith and turns into nothing. What stats? We have not had a shot on target yet. Well, we haven't had any shots. Oh, great ball over. Agbon and... Well, we had a shot. Should have done better. That's a great over ball. Overhead ball. Over for line ball. I'm still trying to work out where it was. Could be any of them, right? All right, we've got a ball again. Go on, Rendell. So Agben on. He's using his pace. Instead, that's what I like to see. And Pendleberry. If I was turning over, I was in. Maybe <laughs> beginning of the season. Oh, Tashunga's got for ball. He's walking around it. Oh, player was going to get the end of that. You doing well. Oh. Pundits not believing us, but the fans do. Go make them proud. Get a one, you feel a bit nervous. Oh, Smith's playing it quick out. Do I have a quick out? It's that second time I've seen that, and it's not working. Yeah, I mean, I don't even have dispute quickly, but he's disputing quickly. Maybe slow down pace. Slow it down a bit. Uh, actually, we're on we're on counter, aren't we? Again, is this working for us? Counter pressing counter. Is that making us too vulnerable? Got pace though. Yeah, let's. Let's, um, yeah, let's have distribute. Uh, I mean, he's distributing quickly already, right? And it hasn't really paid off. I think defense wise, they're not getting too much of an effort. I'm going to take work ball off, work ball into box. See what that does. Take that pressure off them that they have to get in the box. That's it, Pendlebury. Ag, Ben on. I can really struggle with that name. Ridgerington. Let's call him Aggie. Bailey. He's going to have a crack. Ooh, lucky Bailey. We've had no shot on target. Right. Oh, on on. Uh, do I just keep these players out wide? I'm going to try something. And it's going to be quite a traditional 4 4 2, if I'm honest. But a defensive 4 4 2. Uh, is Pendle Bailey playing all right? I mean, he's playing the same as for other two volunteer positions. Uh, I'm going to bring on Connor Evans for Pendle Bailey. We're going to play, we're going to get Connor Evans to press him forward and him for advance forward. And then I'm literally just going to have these as him as our attack winger. 
and him as a support winger. Yeah, okay. Uh, I'm not going to play narrow anymore. We'll play standard width. Keep that, we'll keep that. And we'll keep that. One change, let's have a look. Maybe Gaxa on for stead. Yeah, happy with that. And let's see how those changes go. All right, Chesterfield's got a corner. After all those changes, this is where we bloody score. No, offside. I told you it could be a ball draw. Eight third minute. Should we make another change? Still haven't had a strike on goal. Had shots doing nothing. Grante's not playing well. I mean, he played well last game. But they're annoying. Uh, ben Salt needs a rest. Yeah, B for one. And that's it. That's my changes done. Again, I'm away. I'll be happy with a draw. Oh, we got a shot on target. Amazing. Change worked. All right. Four minutes of injury time and Chesterfield. Oh, I thought they was going to nick it up at end then. So there's still time to play three minutes. This is where it's all going to happen now, isn't it? All right, Chesterfield's got for ball again. Over for top. Over for top. That's for saying. No, I get it. Over for top. What was I saying? Over for head. Over for top. Go on, egg burn on on. Float it in. Oh, Bailey, another chance. Come on. Wheatley, go on, crack it. Oh my God, that was awful. That nearly went out of stadium. Probably would have. What's time? Jesus. Chesterfield's got another chance. Oh, Rendell. Good header back. Well done, Rendell. But, oh, especially in for rain. That didn't bounce right. Smith's trying to find it over the top. Oh, Chesterfield, last chance. Don't nick it. Don't nick it. Are oh, you freaking joking me? No. Fuck you now. Oh, fuck you now. Who's not marking their man, you twat? I can't believe that. Dead on 94 minutes. Oh, I'm going to hate injury time in Nick's football manager. See all that action in the space of four minutes. I just don't even know what to say and do now. Oh, this last video, my thumbnail in the last video, it's got me thinking of this long road. Oh, oh I should have put bumpers and cones. Oh, maybe that's my next thumbnail. Bumpers and cones. I'm going to just, it's a, it's a hurdle race. It's not even a clear road ahead. It's a hurdle race. It's full of crap in my way. Oh, Right, what did we say to these boys? If we look at the numbers, we should have won that. So despite the result, no, we should not have won that. No, that's bollocks. Uh, you did yourself proud. No, you didn't. You lost in for last minute. I'm proud of your efforts, it, 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 even if it wasn't to be today. Maybe. I hate that. We should have won. No, we should not have won. Yes, I'm disappointed. We weren't good enough and don't have words to express how angry. No, but I'm not angry. I'm kind of like, I'm just livid. 94th minute. Team played well, away from home. Deserve the draw. Sometimes the result doesn't go your your way, but I'm very happy with performance regardless. I mean, I'm looking at their ratings and not one player got a 7. Trent Randall, 6.9. There's a lot of crap performance out there. I think, yeah, I, I think that effort wasn't there. I'm proud of that. Yeah, but we should have got a draw. Yeah, I think that's the right thing to say. Sophie's choice. Oh, we're ninth in the table. We've now got negative in goal difference. 21 points. I want to see what the relegated team's got in points. Because fans criticise my tactics. Uh, seems reluctant to consider changing. What did I do? It, I mean, we was drawing and I changed that. I put two up front and we lost. I changed my tactics and we lost. Yeah, Evans, you four striker. I mean, seven off the bench, two starts, no goals. And I can't terminate your loan. You have not been good. I mean, he scored 20 goals last season uh, for Chorley. So he knows where the net is. And I mean, for step up, can't be that big of a difference. I thought he was going to be a good signing. Let's have a look at last season's table quickly before we go. 47 went down, 48. So to be safe, we need 50. I mean, if we if we win our next game, that puts us on 24, which pretty much means that we're halfway there and we're not past our halfway stage for us yet. 46, 23 is for halfway mark. So we need to get to 25 points before we get to 23 games played. It's doable, it's doable. And then 
<laughs> we need to pick up some wins like we did at the beginning of the season just to give us a push. And then, uh, yeah, so 50 points is our target. Fair enough. We now know what we need to do. So disappointing again to end the video on a loss. I need to go away and see what I can do with this team because I don't think it's fair for me just to keep on sharing crap. No one wants to watch crap. We need to watch good, just like last season. But anyway, we've got a target, and our target is 50 points. And I think that's going to be my bomb now. Target 50 points to stay up, because that's what we've got to do. And then build on this season, just like we did when we took over Brackley. We took a team halfway through. They wasn't performing. Had the summer to rebuild, and we won the league. So I reckon this season, let's just survive. I really don't think, unless I come up with a miracle tactic to give us a boost up and I and it just all clicks in with the players I've got. I don't think that's going to happen. 50 points is our target. If we do better, amazing. If we do push for players, even better. No, nah, no, nah, nah, nah. don't push it. Don't push it. 50 points, 50 points, 50 points, 50 points. Let's get that into our head. I'm going to go off. I'm going to probably play now uh, two, three months of this game. Wish me luck. I'm going to need it. And hopefully I will come back to you with a bit of better standard of play. And if I do, I'm going to be so excited to share that with you. So you know what you need to do if you want to see the next video. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button so it goes out to the world. And I will catch you on for the next one. Thank you for watching.